Hey guys, uh, this is Dooley. Uh, so in this video, we will sort of wrap up our discussion about the operators, the link operators that allow us to do quantifier operations, which is uh, when uh, the the operator returns a boolean value, uh, true or false, telling us uh, whether or not uh, the elements in that collection meet a certain criteria. Okay, so in the past two videos we've looked at all, we've looked at any, and all, with all we were asking are all the elements in that collection meeting a certain criteria. With any we were asking is there any element in that collection meeting the given criteria. Now today we are going to talk about contains and the question contains ask is uh, I have this element here. Uh, can you tell me if this element appear in uh, the collection that we uh, I'm calling uh, contains on? Okay, so the setup I have here is exa exactly the same as the previous video that we did for any. And I have a list of integers, a list of strings, and an array of uh, custom objects. And this is an object you've seen before, the gene class, where you have a couple of properties. One's a string, one's an integer, and a couple of functions that uh, uh, return, uh, uh, one is uh, returns a list of genes, and another one returns a list of, uh, uh, an array of genes. Okay, so let's uh, go back to program.cs. So what uh, I want to do here is see how I can use contain to talk to that list of uh, integers. So I want to know if uh, let's say 8 appears in in uh, data 1. Okay, so what I want to do here is create a local variable. Let's call it and contain. You can tell how creative I am with my naming. Okay, so let's uh, that's going to be data 1 that contains. This is a very straightforward operation, so I want to know if it contains 8, so this is what we're going to do. Alright, let's go ahead and print print the return value here. So, int contain. Alright, let's see what we get. Now what do we expect here? We're expecting false because 8 actually does not appear in that uh, list right there. Alright, All right, that's what we get false. On the other hand, if we had uh, given 23, we would be getting true because 23 actually appears in that list, actually appears twice. Alright, so that's uh, that. That's how you'd use it only the 7 inches. Alright, and now let's move on to the list of strings and the principle is essentially the same. Uh, what it's going to do is go look in that collection and find out if the element you provide appears in that collection. If it does you get true, if it doesn't you get false. All right, So let's go ahead and do that for the fruits uh, collection. Alright so let's call this fruit contain. That's going to be fruits that contain. Okay. What kind of fruit could we check? Let's check for guava. I believe guava is a, is a tropical fruit. That's really good. All right. Let's uh, get fruit here. Fruit contain. Let's run this and see what we get. False. Well, that's expected since guava does not appear in that list. On the other hand, if I had given orange and spelt it right, we are supposed to get true here because orange does appear in that list. All right, so and that's it's as easy as that. Now we have an array of, uh, uh, of a custom class of custom new ins instances of custom object, uh, which is the gene class uh, 
that you've seen before. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, compare, find out if we have a certain gene somewhere. Okay. So inside the genes array, I want to know if it contains if a certain gene appear. All right, so let me go back to the gene class here, go to that function and just pick one of these. Let's just pick one of these genes, okay? And let's just pop it in here. Okay, now this gene is coming from the function and this is one of the uh, genes that would be returned from that array just to make things easier here let me just print the genes array okay so let's run this and see what we got now we're expecting true right okay yeah but actually that's nah, I'm not printing the right thing here contain that's what we want okay we're expecting true because that does appear in the array but boom we get false what's the issue here the issue here is contains doesn't know how to compare two genes okay you're giving it one gene and you're asking it does it appear in my collection okay for it to be able to do that it needs to be able to compare this custom object to the other custom objects appearing in that array and uh, because we've done this sort of thing before uh, for the genes class, we currently have a gene compare class already ready. Okay, first of all, let me not get ahead of myself. The way, uh, there are a couple of ways you're able to, um, there are a couple of ways you can tell the contain function that how to compare a couple of genes. Uh, the one way, the first way is to have the, the gene class implement the I equitable interface where you implement a couple of functions. One is equal and the other is get hash code. Uh, the equals function would, uh, would compare the instance object to another object that you provide and decide whether or not they are equal. And the, the hash uh, get hash code function is just a utility function that returns an integer that Microsoft algorithm can use to do its operations uh, to make these comparisons okay so uh, you could either do that uh, which is implementing uh, the I equitable interface for the gene class or you can create a class that uh, implements the I equality comparer uh, interface which is what we did here uh, so we have a gene compare class that implements uh, the I quality compare interface which is very similar interface to to the I equitable interface you can see there are two functions get ash code and equals uh, the difference is uh, equals will take two parameters and which will be two genes that you can compare and decide uh, where they are not, uh, they are equal. And they get ash code pretty much does the same thing. Okay. Alright, so let's get back to program. Why did we get false again? Because we could not compare uh, this uh, gene with uh, all the other genes in the genes collection. Alright, so what we want to do is uh, provide a new instance of the gene compare class. So let's go ahead and new gene Error. Uh, what was that about? Okay. Okay, now we have a way to compare the genes. Let's go ahead and run this function. We should be getting true here. But if I change this and be mean, we should be getting false. Because that collection does not actually appear in the array. So Whenever you're using uh, these functions that uh, sort of will be comparing uh, your custom objects, 
be sure you either implement the i equitable interface or you have a class that implements the i equality compare interface that will allow you to compare two uh, two instances of uh, the same class all right so this is the video about uh, contains and contains allow you to ask the question uh, i have an object here could you tell me if this object appears in uh, the collection that we're talking about not necessarily an object some element it could be an integer a double a string and so on all right so this is the last video in this uh, small series uh, that's going to talk about uh, quantifier operations uh, in the next few videos uh, we will continue talking about the link operators all right so go ahead and subscribe if you want to know when these uh, videos are coming up uh, hit the like button if you like the videos and if you've got questions and suggestions uh, hit me in the comment section and uh, I will respond and I will see you next time